Hello, thank you for joining me for another episode of Band Together Leadership Seminars. My name is Paul Everts. I am the CEO and founder of Band Together. I would love you to join me on my Facebook or on my website, www.conductingmylife.com. And you also, why don't you give me an email, band to the number two together at comcast.net. Also uh, on the website, go to the curriculum tab and scroll down. You'll see all this wonderful John Maxwell material. And we're going to actually do a little bit of that tonight for you. And then go down and you'll see Venmo. So we are looking for donations, contributions to keep the mission going. So let me turn down this cool jazz music for you. And let's go. Let's get going. Let's get better. Better people make better leaders. So we're going to talk about this wonderful Winning with People by John C. Maxwell. Um, this would be one of the offerings I would do. I can do this for churches. I can do it for uh, businesses. We can do it as private lessons. Ages, I would prefer middle school to any age. But middle school is the lowest um, or the, the youngest I will do this. But I, I want to go over this material with you because I think it'll be beneficial. So we're going to talk about people principle number one. Got to get my old man glasses on because I'm at that age now. Unless it makes me look smarter. Okay, here we go. Readiness. Are we prepared for relationships? Right now, we're seeing uh, a, an interesting time with relationships. Uh, I know I'm hitting this stumbling block. I would like to have not lost my relationships, but I have. And uh, someday I'll get them back. But on the other hand, as I like to say to people, there's 320 million people. I'm hoping five or six are going to give me their time. So we're going to talk about the lens principle. The question we ask is who uh, we are determines how we view others. So the question is, what is my perception of others? Groucho Marx once said, I wouldn't want to belong to any club that would accept me as a member. So who you are determines the way you see everything. And I think that's where we're at right now. So who are you? You know, I, how are you seeing the world right now? It's through your lenses. It's who you are. You cannot separate your identity from your perspectives. My chaplain, John, will love that because we're working on the word perspectives. He's going to get a kick out of that. All that you are and every experience you have had colors how you see things. It's your lens. And this is what I mean. Who you are determines what you see. A Coloradan moved to Texas and built a house with a large picture window from which he could view hundreds of miles of rangeland. When asked how he enjoyed the view, his res he responded, the only problem is that there's nothing to see. About the same time, a Texan moved to Colorado and built a house with a large picture window overlooking the Rockies. When asked how he liked it, he said, the only problem with this place is that you can't see anything because all those mountains are in the way. Number two, who you are determines how you see others. Who you are determines how you see others. So the way people see others is a reflection of themselves. Um, and I think that's getting to be literal. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to include gender now. It's going to include race. We're, I guess we, we, we're going into, again, we're, we're retrograding. Okay? Um, I just saw an interesting uh, episode where we are now talking about equity. And you hear President Biden, uh, just did it, stumble. President Biden stumble over the word equity because he's so used to the word equity equality so the way we see others is a reflection of themselves if I'm a trusting person I will see others as trustworthy if I'm a critical person I will see others as critical if I'm a caring person I will see others as compassionate Phil McGraw in his Texas Southern drawl said you teach people how to treat you. 
And I've said that a lot to my students. And again, I probably have students watching this tonight. I hope I do. I've told them, you're teaching me how to treat you right now by how, what you're doing. Okay? You want to be treated nicely? Okay, then treat me nicely kind of a thing. I, I, you're teaching me how to treat you. Number three, who you are determines how you view life. Who you are determines how you view life. How are you viewing life right now through the COVID, through losing jobs, losing friends, um, being not the front of the line for the COVID vaccine? What, what does life look like to you? So again, it says who you are determines how you view life. Are you an optimist? Are you a pessimist? Are you a realist? I tend to be a realist. I hate fiction. I usually only read nonfiction, self-help books like this. So I tend to look at life. This is why right now, virtual learning virtually stinks, but it really stinks. Number four, who you are determines what you do. Who you are determines what you do. So if you're a nice person, you probably do nice things. If you're a mean person, you probably do mean things. Who you are determines what you do. If you're a giving person, you give things. If you're a taker, you take. So what determines who we are? Well, genetics being one of them. Your makeup, your DNA. Two, self-image. Poet T.S. Eliot observed, quote, Half of the harm that is done in this world is due to people who want to feel important. They do not mean to do harm. They are absorbed in the endless struggle to think well of themselves. Ooh. Wow. Half of the harm that is done in this world is due to people who want to feel important. Did you get that, politicians? So you're doing things so you can feel important. And I agree. Those politicians, they, they don't mean to harm. Sure, we want people, transgenders, to run. We don't mean harm. But again, have you listened to the girls? Have you listened to what they're saying? Now, I don't want this to be political, but I am bringing up topics that we're dealing with right now in our nation. Number three, what determines who we are? Number three is experiences in life. Once upon a time, a group of villagers instructed their young shepherd, when you see a wolf, cry wolf, and we will come with guns and pitchforks. The next day, the boy was tending his sheep when he saw a lion in the distance. He cried out, lion, lion. No one came. The lion killed several sheep. The shepherd boy was distraught. He asked the villagers, well, why, why didn't you come when I called? The older men replied, there are no lions in this part of the country. The wolves, the wolves are what you have to look for. The young shepherd learned a valuable lesson. People respond to what they are prepared to do, believe. And what prepares them for what they believe is their experience. So they only had experiences with what? Wolves. Lions? What are you talking about? Only wolves. Lions don't exist. Number four. What determines who we are? Attitudes and choices about those experiences. So, you know, for me, a horrific experience was mom and dad getting a divorce. And you can, you actually, again, not to give you a commercial, but you can hear about that and read about that in my book, Conducting My Life. Um, my attitude and my choices about that, of course, changed at 55 years old, but at the time, it was horrific. And I needed to change my attitude. I had to go from uh, being mad at mom and dad to choosing to, as attitudes and choices, to choosing to. And that was the best thing to do. 
If mom and dad stayed married, both of them being alcoholics, who knows what would have happened to my life. And then finally, what determines who we are? Friends. The way you view others is determined by who you are. You cannot get away from the truth. If you don't like people, that really is a statement about you. And the way you look at people. Who you are determines how you view others. Your viewpoint is the problem. If that is the case, don't try to change others. Don't even focus on others. Focus on who? You. Focus on you. If you change yourself and become the kind of person you want to be, you will begin to view others in a whole new light. And what will change the way you interact in all of your relationships? And that, and that will change the way you interact in all of your relationships. Friends are certainly important. And we need to make sure that we choose them carefully. We need to make sure that um, we give and receive. So I call them hugs to our friends. And it's really hard to do that now during the COVID. And uh, I've lost some friends. And uh, both not my choice, meaning death, and by my choice, because I were losing stuff in common with them. And they've walked away from me. So how you are right now, and again, that, let's, let's go back to review real fast what this principle is. This is people principle number one, readiness. Are we ready for relationships is the question. The lens principle, who we are determines how we view others. The question I, might, I must ask myself, what is my perception of others? So I'm hoping that your perception and my perception is gonna be positive first. Think fondly of that person, give them a chance, and then see what happens. Begin with the end in mind. Every choice you make is who you are, so you gotta choose wisely, like choosing your friends. Seek first to understand, then be understood. There are people that are really hurting. And our goal here at Band Together Leadership is to uplift people who want to be lifted up. I'm hoping you are getting lifted up tonight or today, whenever you're watching this. And then finally, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I care about you a lot. That's why I do this. Because I want you and I to be better people. And then finally, say it with me. I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can. And I'm doing the best I can. Respect, responsible, discipline, integrity, faith. Do those five words. Do them. Put them into action. Okay? Don't make them just nouns. Let's go. To be respected. To be responsible. Make them action. Okay, I babbled on. It's been 13 minutes and I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, guys. I love you. Have a good day.